the last lecture what we saw was um, uh, that if you took a linear plant which is positive real and the definition of positive real has these uh, ambiguities but uh, what we effectively would mean is that the Nyquist plot lies in the right half plane and the system the given system is linear. Now if you take such a plant and uh, then such a plant is of course passive. Now uh, if you now take a uh, non-linearity such that the characteristic of the non-linearity lies in the 0 to infinity sector then one can think of that non-linearity also as being a passive system. As a result what happens is when you interconnect the linear system given by a transfer function which is positive real with a non-linearity which is in the 0 infinity sector then you end up with a resulting system which when you do not give any input is asymptotically I mean uh, of course the origin is uh, an equilibrium point of this uh, system without inputs and uh, this system is asymptotically stable. In fact when uh, the transfer function is taken to be strictly positive real then you can say more in fact, you could say that the resulting system is exponentially stable. Okay. So, let me just uh, reiterate uh, uh, what I have just said um, in terms of some diagrams so that uh, you it would be clear to you what I am uh, trying to say. So, what we are doing is the following. So, you have a linear plant G s and you have this feedback connection and you have this non-linearity. So, this negative feedback. Okay. Now, um, this linear plant that you have, we are saying that this linear plant is positive real. Of course, in the last class I had given uh, various uh, uh, interpretations of what we mean by positive real, but what, uh, what I would mean by positive real here is that the Nyquist plot of this plant is in the right half plane and in addition G s is stable. Okay. Of course, uh, one could uh, also use the definition of positive real to say that uh, G s plus uh, G transpose uh, S star is greater than or equal to 0 for all real uh, for all s whose real part is positive that is another equivalent definition. Okay. Now, by uh, making this assumption, okay, so let me write down G s is uh, positive real and stable. Okay. Now, if I call the input of this G s as u and the output of G s is y, then uh, what it means when you say that G s is positive real and stable is uh, that u transpose y is greater than equal to v dot where v is the storage function of G s. We have already uh, talked about what the storage function could be and uh, uh, in order to find out what the storage function could be, we invoke the positive real lemma or the kalman Yakubovich lemma uh, from where we get this matrix P and uh, uh, you know if, if you recall uh, when you have G s to be positive real and stable then that is equivalent to this uh, set of equations. That means, if you, if you take uh, the minimal representation for uh, g of s to be a x plus b u y equal to c x plus d u. Then uh, using these matrices you can write down that there exists uh, a p which is positive definite and two other matrices l and w such that first of all a transpose p plus p a is equal to minus l transpose l and then you have p b 
is equal to C transpose minus L transpose W and uh, lastly you have W transpose W is equal to D plus D transpose. And so, this P that you get which is positive definite you take the storage function V to be x transpose p x where this p is this p that you get from the positive real lemma. Okay? Now, what about the nonlinearity? Now, the nonlinearity that one picks is of the following kind. So, the nonlinearity, so let me draw that uh, diagram once more. So, here you have the nonlinearity we are calling this output of the linear thing u, uh, sorry the output y and the input u. Okay. Let me call the input of the nonlinearity psi and let me call the output of the nonlinearity phi. Okay. Now, the nonlinearity is such that if you draw the characteristics of the nonlinearity, so you have xi on this axis and you have phi on this axis then the nonlinearity is something that lies in the first and the third quadrant. Now, if it lies in the first and the third quadrant, then it is very clear that uh, if you multiply the input of the nonlinearity which is psi to the output of the nonlinearity which is phi, then psi or psi transpose phi if uh, one is considering the vectorial, uh, the vector situation that means multi input, multi output situation this is clearly greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, since this is greater than or equal to 0, uh, one can say that uh, this nonlinearity has a storage function v 1, which is uh, the 0 storage function. Okay. Now, uh, earlier in the, in the last slide, I had said that you have u transpose y is greater than or equal to v dot where this v was given as x transpose p x with this p coming from the uh, positive real lemma. Now, if you look here, there are these interconnection equations which is y is equal to psi and phi is equal to minus phi is equal to minus u. Therefore, this psi transpose phi in fact psi transpose phi is really equal to minus u transpose y and this is greater than or equal to 0. So, if you add this equation and this equation, you end up with 0 is greater than or equal to v dot. Now, what this means is that if you use this v that is x transpose p x as a Lyapunov function for this closed loop system, assuming that this input, the external input is 0. So, if you have the external input to be 0, this is like a, a system with no inputs and this system with no inputs will have these conditions satisfied and if you have these conditions satisfied, then you have 0 is greater than or equal to v dot and if you take v to be x transpose p x and uh, that is then that can act like a Lyapunov function of for this closed loop system. And then what we have here is that its derivative is less than or equal to 0. So, in fact, from that you can conclude that this resulting system is stable. Now, uh, if, you, if you remember, we had also talked about the uh, Kalman Yakubovich Popov lemma. What we had said was that if you take this thing to be strictly positive real okay so maybe i will mark that with black then uh, the change in the equations are that instead of this you will get minus epsilon p also into this equation into this first equation all the other equations remain as they are but what this means is when you substitute in here instead of v dot being less than or equal to 0, you will get 0 is strictly greater than v dot and as a result, because of that epsilon epsilon p which is there, 
using the kalman yakubovich lemma if this gs was taken to be strictly positive real then we would uh, uh, we can conclude expon exponential stability okay so what we are going to do in this class is uh, we will now explore uh, what new conclusions we can draw using this rather powerful result okay uh, maybe before we do that i would like to use this uh, this v as uh, which we have got from this uh, positive definite matrix p as a lyapunov function and show that this resulting system is um, uh, is asymptotically stable well uh, in order to show that i essentially only have to show that u transpose y is uh, greater than or equal to v dot and then the rest of it we have already seen that means if you take u transpose y greater than or equal to v dot and uh, you already know when you take a nonlinearity like this that psi transpose phi is greater than or equal to 0 and when you sum both of this you get 0 is greater than or equal to v dot so all you have to show is that u transpose y is greater than or equal to v dot okay uh, one uh, small um, adjustment uh, of a constant i have to do i should not be taking v as x transpose px but i should be taking this as x transpose px by 2 yeah half so now if we take uh, that then so v we are taking to be a half x transpose px so then in that case v dot is half x dot transpose px plus a half x transpose px dot but we know that x dot is ax plus bu from the uh, equation uh, equation of the uh, of the system uh, of the linear system so substituting that in here we will get uh, a half of uh, x transpose a transpose p plus from here similarly so p a x plus i would get half u transpose b transpose p x uh, plus half x transpose p b u okay now this from the kalman yakubovich lemma or uh, rather the positive real lemma this is the same as minus l transpose l so i can put that in there and if i look at these two terms pb uh, we know that one of the equations that we have from the positive real lemma is pb is equal to c transpose minus l transpose w so for pb i can substitute c transpose minus l transpose w and similarly for this so i'll just expand this out and show what that comes to so a half x transpose p b u becomes a half x transpose c transpose u plus uh, or rather minus a half x transpose l transpose w u okay now uh, if you look at the output equation of the linear plant you have y is equal to cx plus du and so the cx i can substitute as y minus du and once i do that i get a half y transpose u minus a half u transpose d transpose u so this is from this x transpose p b u from this thing you would get exactly the transposes of this so when you put them all together then you end up with v dot is equal to minus a half x transpose l transpose lx that accounts for this and then from both of this you will end up with u transpose y because this half and then the another half coming from there and then uh, you have this term and there'll be a similar term coming from the other portion and so putting both of them together you will have u transpose d transpose u and you'll have u transpose du and d plus d transpose 
one of those equations that you had was d plus d transpose is equal to w transpose w the positive real lemma gave us this equation. So, using that you will get u transpose w transpose w u a half of that okay. and then these last two terms which uh, okay. so uh, there will be this term and the transpose of this both with an a minus sign. And so, if I put all of them together, then what I end up with is v dot is equal to first of all u transpose by which we had here and then these two terms and uh, the other two terms this and its transpose putting them all together you will get minus half L x plus w u the whole thing transpose L x plus w u. And now you see this quantity here is positive quantity and therefore, you can conclude v dot is less than equal to u transpose y and this is essentially what we wanted in order to conclude from this sheet that u transpose y is greater than equal to v dot 0 is greater than e and uh, you already have this about the nonlinearity and when you put both of them together you get 0 is greater than equal to v dot and therefore, you can show you can show uh, uh, stability. Now, if one assumes that g of s is uh, strictly positive real, then in that case in this equation here a transpose p plus p a, there will be one additional term here and this additional term if I call it epsilon p, this additional term, this additional term will finally end up in the last equation and here you would have minus epsilon x transpose p x and this will now let us prove that the resulting system is in fact asymptotically stable. Now, uh, what I am going to do is I am going to make use of this um, rather powerful theorem and I am going to look at all kinds of nonlinearities and uh, derive new results about which nonlinearities with the when uh, put in a feedback connection with uh, a certain kind of linear plant would result in an asymptotically stable system. Okay. So, let me conclude about this first. So, what I am saying now is suppose you take a nonlinearity well, let me call it f that belongs to the 0 infinity sector. Now, when I say that a nonlinearity belongs to a 0 infinity sector, what I mean by that is that if psi is the input of the nonlinearity and this is f of psi the output of the nonlinearity, then this nonlinearity lies in the 0 to infinity sector. That means, it lies either in the first quadrant or in the third quadrant. Okay. If you have any such nonlinearity, any nonlinearity which belongs to this class, and you take a g of s which is stable and strictly positive real, then this feedback connection of the strict strictly positive real stable plant with the nonlinearity results in something which is asymptotically stable. But uh, suppose now the nonlinearity that we consider is this particular nonlinearity. Now, if you consider this particular nonlinearity, then uh, you can you can see that of course it is true that this nonlinearity lies in the zero infinity sector. But in fact, you can say more things about this nonlinearity because suppose I draw a slope like this, call it k1, and suppose I draw another slope, um, let us say like that, call it k2, then in fact, this nonlinearity f lies in the 
k 1 k 2 sector. So, what I am trying to say is that the nonlinearity is such that k 1 is less than equal to f xi by xi which is less than equal to k 2. So, uh, in some sense by uh, declaring f to be in this sector from 0 to infinity, uh, we are doing an overkill because uh, we can get a much tighter bound for the nonlinearity and in fact, we can say that the nonlinearity lies in the sector k 1 k 2. In fact, out here as you can see, okay, uh, so here the way I have drawn it of course, the k 2 there is some portion here of the characteristic which has the slope k 2, but uh, instead of writing this sometimes uh, people would write something like this k 1 k 2 an open interval k 1 k 2. Now, uh, when you mean an open interval k 1 k 2 or a closed interval k 1 k 2, the difference between them is essentially to do with these inequalities whether they are strict inequalities or just uh, you know non strict inequalities. So, when you have non strict inequalities then you would put the closed bracket, when you have uh, strict inequality you would put the open bracket. Yeah, and of course, there would be semi open, semi open, semi closed kind of intervals also for the nonlinearity. Okay. Now, um, fine, because this nonlinearity lies in the 0 infinity sector, therefore, we know that if you take any stable strictly positive, uh, strictly positive real. Uh, transfer function and uh, connect it in this feedback loop with this particular nonlinearity, you will get an asymptotically stable system. But um, since we can put a tighter bound on this nonlinearity, that means this nonlinearity actually lies in the k1, k2 sector. Therefore, one would expect that apart from these plants, there are other plants also which you could uh, uh, you could connect with this nonlinearity and these plants may not be belonging to this class that means they may not be strictly positive real or stable but despite that the resulting system is asymptotically stable and uh, the the reason one, one uh, why one would believe that is because it is true that this particular nonlinearity is in the zero infinity sector, but in fact we can say that it is in the k 1 k 2 sector. And so, if it is in the k 1 k 2 sector, it would be very surprising if there are no extra plants that uh, one can connect to the nonlinearity resulting in the system being stable. I mean one would naturally expect that there would be more plants that you can connect to the nonlinearity and the resulting system is, uh, is uh, asymptotically stable. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is we are going to explore this situation where you have the nonlinearity given in a certain sector and one wants to characterize all the all the transfer functions which you can connect in this feedback loop with those nonlinearities such that the resulting system is asymptotically stable.